The following is a presentation of Project Independence and WCWP. Project Independence is the Aging in Place initiative of the Town of North Hempstead. We provide programs and services designed to assist and support the older town residents who wish to remain in their homes as they age. If we don't currently provide a service, we will try and connect you to that service. Call 311 or 869-6311 to get more information or receive services. Welcome to Project Independence and you. Welcome to Community Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. This is Project Independence and You. I'm your host, John Ryan, and my co-host today is Otto Lose. Hello, Otto. How are you? Good morning, John. I haven't nice. seen Otto in a while, so it's great to be here. We did have the opportunity to chat a little. That was good. That was fun. I am great. I, 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 and I even saw you dancing. You did, yeah. I saw you dancing <laughs> with the video. You're, you're a hot guy to trust. Well, um, I was going to talk about that later, but we, we actually, will. We uh, will. That'll be on the Christina Lou show. <laughs> Went to uh, the first Christina, wedding in a year and a half, and it was. Was good. it really? Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's going to be a great thing to talk about. It know, will be. We're yeah. getting back to normal, yeah. um, but now we're going to go to our, our guest today, and our guest is uh, Stephanie Sitterman, and Stephanie is the elder abuse coordinator at the Safe Center, and over the years we've had different people on in reference to elder abuse. And elder abuse takes so many forms. It's financial, it's personal, it's emotional, it's sexual, it's health deprivation. It's amazing the level um, that these poor seniors can get abused at. Um, And today it's just such a pleasure to have someone like Stephanie who's gonna go over some of the signs, uh, talk about the Safe Center also, but they say, and because Excuse me. The Safe Center is more than just a place for uh, elder abuse. I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful organization. So we'll touch on that. Um, but the main focus will be elder abuse. Good morning, Stephanie. How are you? Good morning. Yeah. Thank yep. you. OK, yeah. uh, but you're gone again. But nevertheless, um, tell us something about the Safe Center. OK, first, I want to thank John Ryan, Otto Loth and Christina Lou for inviting me to speak um, today again for Project Independence. Um, I'm a pediatrician. I work now at the Safe Center and Education Department. My official title is Enough Abuse and Nassau County Elder Abuse Enhanced Multidisciplinary Team Coordinator. Okay. Um, the Safe Center, for those of you not familiar with it, is a nonprofit organization located in Bethpage at the old Grumman site. We provide free, confidential, and comprehensive services for victims of abuse and assault, as well as their non-offending family members, including domestic dating violence, which you oftentimes refer to as intimate partner violence, severe child abuse and neglect, rape and sexual assault, human trafficking, elder abuse, and maltreatment. Um, Our clients include women, children, men, the elderly, LGBTQIA plus community, It was created in 2014 uh, through the merger of the Nassau County Coalition Against Domestic Violence and the Nassau County Coalition Against Child Abuse and Neglect. We have multiple, multiple programs and services. Once again, they are free and confidential. We have a 24 hour hotline for those who may be victims of abuse or assault or know someone who is a victim or is concerned about someone being a fender. We have professionals manning that line, like I said, 24 seven, who can answer your questions and guide you to the appropriate services. If the safe center is unable to provide it, we can triage you to those agencies throughout Long Island and even outside Long Island who may be able to. So we also serve as a triage center here in Nassau County. Um, we, have, we are the site of the Nassau County Child Advocacy Center. Um, we help victims, child victims of abuse and neglect during investigation, as well as providing counseling and medical exams. We also, in our um, facility, we have um, some of the Nassau County um, child abuse. Okay, um, terrific. Say- yeah. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is the Safe Center is really it's a tremendous organization and has so many different divisions to help people. And, and what I always tell people, if in need, you call 311 and we will direct you to the Safe Center or some other 
uh, worthy organization. Um, what I'd like to do right now is, is sure. get into some of a conversation on elder abuse. Sure. And what do you feel that you're seeing in your organization is the number one? Is it physical? Is it financial? Is it emotional? Where do you see uh, the most prevalent cases of elder abuse in Nassau County right now? All right. It's a two part question. Okay. The Safe Center mainly um, takes care of elders who have been um, victims of either domestic violence or sexual assault. Okay. Significant number of cases we see in the Nassau County EMDT, which is that multidisciplinary team, involve some form of financial exploitation, fraud, or abuse, or um, negligence. Okay, just, I'm gonna go back. Let's start yeah. with domestic abuse. What is domestic abuse? What is domestic abuse? Um, Domestic abuse, like I say, we also now refer to it as intimate partner abuse. Whatever. Domestic abuse occurs when a person, the offender, uses power or control to inflict physical, sexual, emotional, or financial injury or harm upon an older adult with whom they have some type of ongoing relationship, be it a spouse, a partner, or other person known to the victim, including a child or grandchild. Okay. When we talk about domestic violence later on in life, it's just not physical. It also includes emotional and or financial injury or harm. Okay. That's what I was kind of going for because that it's a very broad scope. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Stephanie, I'm just curious. Your okay. your background is you're a pediatrician. Yes. What what led you down the path of of uh abuse actually for um, seniors, elders, you know, it's a complete <laughs> other end of the spectrum, if you will. Well, well and I have always throughout, I do not practice, I, I'm not practicing clinically now. And, but throughout my career as a practitioner, I was always very much involved in community education, as well as obviously patient and parental education. When I joined the Safe Center, I was initially hired to coordinate their Enough Abuse campaign which is a New York State initiative um, designed to teach all adults in New York State um, about child sexual abuse, how to recognize a victim, an offender, if you are concerned that a child may be a victim, what to do about it, and most importantly, what we can do as a community to stop it from ever occurring. Within the beginning of this year, the person who was working with the elder abuse EMDT team resigned and then I assumed her responsibilities. What also led me to it is I had two older parents. My mom passed away last August, 89. My father's still alive at 92. My mom was ill past four, four and a half years of her life. And I was very much involved in her care, not just medically, you know, but otherwise. And I, I saw a lot of abuse that did occur and a lot of potential for abuse. So I became very, very much involved as far as in their care, making sure that they were provided all the services that they needed and that they deserved. Oftentimes, and, and the reason that makes this the EMDT so phenomenal is people don't realize all the services that are available for them within their community, a significant number of them being free. And it's just a matter of knowing where to look for it and who to ask. So I initially became, it was a, started out as a personal issue with me in taking care of my parents. And then once I became the coordinator of the team, that's when I became very much more involved in the education and community outreach. I, I'm, my background was such that my mother lived with us for 11 years and we were working at the time. And I hear what you're saying about uh, abuse. Um, caregivers, uh, many good ones, many with a big heart. And then every now and then there's one or two that come in there that uh, maybe shouldn't be in that field, to be blunt about it. Um, and uh, it's very hard to detect when that's going on, especially if you don't live like if you're working and you're not home and you don't see what's going on. So I kind of have the same personal 
feeling that you do about that. Yeah. The issue is also, I don't, it, it, it's, it's also happening within the house. So it's not necessarily even somebody you're bringing in. Um, and over the years, as we've had different people on the show, you know, the person who is being abused, and Stephanie, you can jump in here, they're afraid, embarrassed. There's many reasons why they don't want to report the person. They're afraid they're going to be put in a home even. If you're living in a house and your son is taking advantage of you, you're afraid to say it because he's going to turn around and say, okay, Mike, you're going into a home. We're done with you. So well, people put up with some of this stuff for the wrong reasons, unfortunately. Only about 90% of elder abuse is ever, is ever reported to the authorities. And you, John, you brought up a, a number of the reasons why it's not reported. Oftentimes an elder person may feel ashamed that they were taken advantage of. Um, fear of retaliation from the alleged abuser, similar to what you said, if it does happen to be a family member, fear that they're gonna say, that's it, you're going into an assisted living facility or, or whatever. Um, that obviously, oftentimes, if it is a family member or a, a partner, um, they wanna protect that partner. Um, fear that if that abuser no longer is in their life, that they're gonna be abandoned and there's gonna be no one available to take care of them. And unfortunately, um, a significant number of elder people have some form of dementia, Alzheimer being one type of dementia, and they may not even realize that they are being a victim of abuse. So there are a number of reasons why it's not reported. It's true. And, and also, one of the things I'm very conscious of, and we here at Project Independence, you know, outsiders have to be aware. You know, when you, the bank teller, has to be acknowledged that all of a sudden uh, Mrs. So-and-so is taking out more than she normally takes and there's somebody standing in the background um, and she doesn't seem herself. Most of the time, these things are pretty transparent if the person opens their eyes to see. In my mind, that's just my opinion, that, you know, something's wrong. Even within a family, you know, there's something wrong with mommy. And it's like maybe one of your brothers or sisters has taken advantage of her. But what we're going to have to do right now, we're going to have to take a break and we will continue with talking here with uh, Stephanie from the Safe Center about elder abuse. You're listening to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We'll be right back. Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS app store on Apple devices or the Google Play store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. Welcome back to Community Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. This is Project Independence and You. I'm your host, John Ryan. My co-host today is Otto Lose, And we are very, very fortunate to have Stephanie with us, Stephanie Sitterman from the Safe Center. And Stephanie is the Elder Abuse Coordinator. And, uh, you know, we here at Project Independence have been working with this in, over the years. I personally have um, with people. And I, I just want to say thank you also to Stephanie because it's, it's one of those jobs that doesn't come with accolades and doesn't come with awards, but it's so important because a person, I don't care how many she can rescue, and I think rescue is a proper word. Um, that may, need, may not be the word they use, uh, but the life that will be changed when Stephanie intervenes and comes up with some strategy to help some of these people. And, and, and it's heartbreaking, that's all I can say. Um, but doing what I doing and saying what I just said, Steph, can you kind of walk us through, you know, if I have a situation where I think I need to help somebody, what's the procedure? I just call you and forget about it. Am I involved in it? Uh, you know, how, how does it work once it is a phone call is made to the safe center? Once a phone call is made to the safe center, like I said, if it involves an elder person, which is essentially anyone 60 years or older here in New York State is the definition. 
um, and it does involve alleged sexual assault or domestic violence, then one of our professionals will then refer you to one of the departments within our agency. If it involves financial exploitation, self-neglect, or other types of abuse, because there are multiple types of elder abuse, then we would refer you to the appropriate agency uh, within our community. Now, I talked about the elder uh, abuse, Nassau County Enhanced Multidisciplinary Team, or EMDT, okay? Okay. Let me just tell you a little bit about who they are and what we do there. This team, is composed of 39 professionals here in Nassau County who have expertise in senior care and abuse. We're talking about representatives from the DA's office, Adult Protective Services, Family Child Association, Teachers Federal Credit Union, um, Office of the Aging, uh, New York what's State. The, what's the, excuse me, what's the name of this group, Steph? The Nassau County Elder Abuse Enhanced Multidisciplinary Team, or EMDT, we refer to it as. Thank you. Um, we have service organizations like Catholic Charities, um, Self-Help Community Services. We have legal services, the Nassau Suffolk Law Services, independent lawyers from LaSalle, LaSalle and Dwyer. Um, Nassau County Police Department, North, Northwell Health System, geriatricians and geriatric psychiatrists, NYU Langone geriatricians, just to, off the top of my head, just to name you know, many of the agencies as well as members of the team. And these are people who literally volunteer their time um, to assist seniors who have been victims of abuse. What happens is oftentimes we get it from senior centers, such as the Glen Cove Senior Center. The social worker there may present, we meet once a month, if not more often, depending upon the case, and she will present a case. I have this uh, 68-year-old woman who um, is seen walking around the streets disheveled or you know whatever the case may be. And oftentimes, it may be taken on by Adult Protective Services before, uh, because of the circumstances. So if Adult Protective Services takes it on and then they deal with the primary issue this woman has, then upon evaluation, they find out, wait a second, this woman doesn't have enough money for food. This woman needs assistance with bathing and things like that. They, other members of the team who provide those services for seniors will then become involved. So it's not just stopping that primary reason for abuse, but we evaluate the whole person and make sure that any or all services that they may require are provided for them. Stephanie, how does Adult Protective Services fit in with the Nassau County EMDT team? Are they like part of it or? Yeah, they are members of it. All these right. agencies obviously are separate agencies on their own. Right. Um, but adult, the adult protective services teams um, is integral, especially with, you know, evidence of elder, any type of, of abuse involving an adult. So now, they are an integral part of our team. Yeah, I heard you one time uh, and you mentioned the word silent call, uh, m meaning I could make a call and nobody really knows I made the call because I suspect that there's abuse. And I'm, maybe I'm a reluctant type and I don't want people to know that I made this phone call, uh, which I think a lot of people might fit into that category. So it, it, am I going down the right path here? Is there okay. such a thing? All right, you're using the wrong term. <laughs> okay, that's why I'm asking. No that's problem. good, that's good. That's what the purpose of the show is. Okay. Yeah, right. Steph. There is financial exploitation is on the rise, especially during the pandemic, when more and more people were home, more and more people depended upon the internet, um, their iPhone and things like that in order to communicate, to get information and communicate with others, um, their employers, their loved ones, their relatives and their friends, okay? Stephanie, just hold yeah. your thought there. I was told, and you may confirm this, 
that in Nassau County, crime is down over 10%, but financial exploitation is up over 100%. I don't know the exact percentages, Okay, but it's not just in Nassau counties throughout the country. And when we refer to the word silent call, and then I'll, I'll ask your first part, and then I'll- Yeah, go good, take your time. Okay, um, majority of us have caller ID on our phone, okay? Oftentimes the phone may ring and you just automatically pick it up and say hello and there's no one on the other end of the line, okay? This is a new type of robocall. It's an automated computer system and they literally make tens and thousands of calls and they build up a human target list. Right. So if you pick up the phone and say hello, their assumption is you're in a residence. If you pick up on the phone and say hello, Project Independence, they're going to assume you're some type of business and organization and erase that number. So wow. they collect those numbers and they literally sell it to scammers right. and or you know give it to them. And they in turn will include that phone number on their call list. That's what silent call. Okay, so okay. nice. Now the I've... other call when we talk about anonymous and confidential. Right, that's what. Okay. That's what. All right, that's a, right. Different terminology. When you call the safe center, um, similar if you're calling child protective services or other agencies as such, and you are making a call, um, I know someone named John Smith, who I think is being um, financially exploited or whatever. Obviously they will take down your name and your contact information. But that information is not given out to the alleged victim. It is not given out to the alleged perpetrator. The only people who may have access to that information is law enforcement or the other agencies that have to become involved in investigating that alleged crime and stopping it. So that's what we mean to say confidential and anonymous. It's not, your name and contact is not given out to everybody. Okay. Only those who need to know. Now, the safe center, just so I understand, yeah. you're, uh, as I see it, two things, really. A facilitator with all these other agencies, depending on the circumstances of the situation. And then the other one is that you provide uh, protective housing, if you will, uh, for where somebody may be able to stay if they're in a really bad situation and they yeah. have to get out rather than live on the street. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Am I yeah, on the right track there? Yes. Um, when we, I talk about all the different programs and services that we provide, um, when it comes to the senior population or elders, like I said, we provide counseling as well as legal services and advocacy services for seniors who have been victims of sexual assault or domestic violence. We do provide emergency housing for them. Um, if it is unsafe for them to remain in their current living situation. And it is temporary until we can find them um, a, a, a residence or home would they be safe in. Yes. That's important. Very important. And the housing is a huge thing. I mean, people, you know, when a time comes or a situation like this unfolds in, some, in front of somebody, you know, where do you go? Where do you live? And, and it's very significant. And that's why people, I'm sure, wind up staying put in a, an abusive relationship. That, that's, that, that's one reason. Another thing which is very, very interesting, and I'm sure I think, Otto, you said you lived with, a parent lived with you. And I know that I experienced with my parents and I've gotten permission from my parents to talk about them. Um, is when you're dealing with an adult, not just a senior, you really have to take in consideration what their wishes are, even though it may not be what we as service providers feel is of their best interest, okay? So if you, John, you mention a person who may be living in a home where a senior is a victim of domestic violence or financial exploitation or neglect of the other person living in their home, be it a partner, a spouse, a child, okay? 
And we recommend, you know, it's dangerous for you to stay there. Let's move you somewhere else. And that senior refuses. They want to stay where they are. We can't force them to leave. So that's the difference. Do you, we'll talk do you about close that case then, Stephanie? No. Do you say we can't help you? Goodbye. No. no. Okay. No. What happens is like people often confuse adult protective services and child protective services. Child protective services, a, a child is assumed not to be able to make such a determination. When it comes to adult protective services, we also we re- have to take in consideration the adult's wishes. <laughs> And oftentimes, like I said, it may not be what we feel is in, of their best interest. Okay, perfect. I, I got an understanding now. But right now we have to take a break again. And we will continue talking with Stephanie from the Safe Center about elder abuse. When we return, you're listening to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We'll be right back. WCWP is your home for great music and great conversation. You'll find all that and more on WCWP.org. Listen live on the web. Check out the lineup. Subscribe to podcasts and stay up to date on the latest station events. Get in touch with us and let us know if you like what you're hearing. And find out how you can support or get involved at the only community public radio station serving Nassau's North Shore. Plus, sign up to get a free bumper sticker. It's all online at WCWP.org. Org. Welcome back to Community Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I'm your host, John Ryan, and my co-host today is Otto Loos. And we're having a wonderful conversation with Stephanie Sitterman from the Safe Center. And in my opening, I missed that this is Project Independence, but I think anybody listening knows that. But anyway, Steph, I'm going to send this over to Otto because Otto had a good question and, and it's going to be a, a thread from which we well, can continue. Well, uh, I thought about like, okay, I have to go to emerg- uh, emergency housing via the safe center. But then I'm thinking to myself, I don't know if I'd like that idea. Uh, and the thing that Project Independence always preaches is we will do whatever we can to help you stay in your own home for as long as you'd like. And I think even though people are being abused, they probably still want to stay in their own home for as long as they can. So I was just wondering how, like, if that's the decision I, as the senior, make, how did I, how do I get protected at that point? It depends upon what the alleged uh, abuse is. Okay. Um, prior to our break, I think, John, you asked me, do we just stop services? Right. As I explained before, what the elder abuse EMDT team does it's not just focusing on that primary abuse. We look at all services that that person may need. So even though that person, if we feel that person should leave the home and they choose not to, we don't close the case. That case, case is active. And we are constantly checking in on the, um, on the client, okay? Providing perhaps home care, a nursing come to the home, or other services that that person may need. So no, we don't just close the case. We um, pursue all the types of services to ensure that that person remains safe. Are you allowed to enter somebody's home? Like how does, how do you, like you can't just go in and knock on the door. Uh, How does that uh, permission or authorization Depending upon the type, depending upon the type of service um, we are providing, um, we would be asking um, permission of that senior person. Right. But if the senior person is afraid and they don't want to give you that authorization, it's not easy, I guess. Well, once again, uh, it depends upon the type of abuse. Okay. Because as I said, we also have the Nassau County Police Department, DA's office, who are members of our team. Okay, so if it's like a physical, obvious physical situation, maybe the police department can get involved because they've been there on a call or whatever. I'm just talking out loud. I don't know. Well, you know what? My guess would be in those situations, and Stephanie can correct me, if even if it's not abuse, if the police are called for something that's disorderly, they're allowed to go in. If I'm beating up my wife and the neighbor calls and said that things are going crazy and something just went through the window, the police are allowed to go in. 
But if you're calling the safe center and saying, I think that the woman next door is being beat up by her husband, uh, I don't believe you have a right to break in. You have to ring the doorbell. And if she says, I'm fine, that's another issue. Um, and, and then that's, I believe, which is a very important point. It's not just the safe center. That's when the family has to get involved, brothers and sisters and, and, and a caring friend even. Because, you know, if you see, uh, go to financial, and all of a sudden you see that mommy's bank account just keeps going down. You have a right to say, Ma, let's go through your, I'll help you with your bills this month. And you say, who are you writing this check to? And why are you writing that for mommy? Oh, uh, well, I'm, you know, I was told I got a phone call. And if I don't pay the extra $200 a month, something's going to happen. That's how you know, it's communication, you know, for the real terrible ones. I don't know how you break in, but from a family perspective, you know, just being aware and trying to have some sort of a conversation with the loved one, I think opens a door. But uh, there's a lot of people that don't have that. I'll call it a luxury uh, of right. family uh, or close friends. They're kind of uh, isolated, um, bad situation. Those are the ones that stink. Yeah. You know, that's where the safe center is there. But even then, I'm, which I'm realizing now with our conversation with Stephanie, it's limited. You know, even though they're there and it's a wonderful resource, you're not just walking in the door and saying, look what you're doing to your mother, your wife, or even the reverse. The woman could be doing it to the man. You know, it's, it's a restrictive, it is really a restrictive situation. Shamefully so, but it is. Well. Stephanie, um, I, I, I don't know if you want to say something. No, I'm waiting. No, oh, <laughs> I, I, I want to I touch on neglect. Okay. Because we're, we're in this realm, you know, and, and maybe if my neighbor comes out bleeding with a black eye, I'd have the right to call the police. Neglect is much more subtle. It's, it's almost undetectable. But lack of food, not letting the person watch TV at night, bathing, et cetera, et cetera, is not so easily determined. But it's major abuse. It's making the person feel like they're trash. Kind of go through a system. I, I don't, you know. You want, you want about neglect. Okay. Yeah. There are two types of neglect. Okay. One is neglect by a caretaker or someone else who has taken on responsibility for the care of that senior. And that could be either passive or willful, okay? Neglect involves not providing the base necessities that a person needs to live, food, clothing, shelter, um, medical care, okay? Um, willful is purposely not filling prescriptions, uh, not providing them with food and or the money in order to buy food. Passive oftentimes comes when a, an adult takes on responsibility as a caregiver of a senior person, especially one who may require a lot of services or a lot of care. Now, a, a caregiver of an elder person, especially one who has a chronic illness, can be extremely rewarding, but in turn can be very, very, very stressful you know, taking care of, of an elder person, especially if that person has a chronic illness, such as um, Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, we know they're not gonna get better, that they're gonna get progressively worse. And here you are taking care of them, perhaps the care you give them may make them feel more comfortable. Perhaps the care give them, you give them may slow down that progress, but eventually you know that that chronic illness is going to lead to their um, death. So it can be also very frustrating, you know, for a caregiver. And oftentimes a caregiver, especially one who is there 24 seven, like I said, it could be an extremely stressful situation. And then they lose sight of the self-care taking care of themselves, okay? So they may not know because they themselves are under a lot of stress and they, they themselves may have other responsibilities. They may have a family of their own that they have to take care of in addition to the senior person. So they may passively, as we saw, we, we call it, be neglectful of some of the needs of that elder person. So that's when we talk about passive 
um, neglect. And oftentimes what happens when you're not providing these life necessities, it could lead to risk of physical, mental, or even emotional harm to that senior person. Then the other type of neglect is self-neglect, which according to the AARP or ARP is increasing in incidence. That is when the elder person is not providing for themselves the basic needs that they need to keep themselves safe, okay? Um, for example, okay, an elder person who has poor balance, okay, or has some type of physical disability that, inf it, that um, influences their ability to walk or, or do certain things, okay? Um, let's say that they're refusing to use the cane or refusing to use the walker and they fall. When an elder person falls, unfortunately, it's not just a bruise, oftentimes it's a fracture, possibly of a hip, which can cause acute harm, but may lead to chronic problems as a result of that, depending upon their age and any other underlying medical issues they may have. That's self-neglect, okay? An elder person who is not buying food, who is eating food that has ex milk that has expired a month ago, okay, or is not going out shopping for themselves. That's self-neglect. And that is also increasing, like I said before, in frequency. So there's two types of neglect. Okay. So you talked about how do you know if someone's being neglected? Yes, oftentimes it is very hard to tell, but there are certain signs that you can look for. One is that person look unkept. Okay. Um, all of a sudden, is their hair getting very, very long? Are their clothes dirty or are they wearing clothes that are torn? Okay. Um, is that person who normally goes to church every Sunday morning or goes to the senior center every Thursday afternoon playing bridge, all of a sudden not showing up? Okay. Um, does that person look as if they lost a lot of weight in a very, very short period of time? Is that person... Um, who you know uses a walker or knows ha has a hearing aid is walking around without the walker. You don't notice the hearing aid in the ear anymore. So there are little subtle um, signs or symptoms that you can look for um, to determine whether or not a, a person is neglect. It's not physical like a bruise or a broken bone but it's mainly just be more observant of their behavior as well as their appearance. Very interesting. Uh, you know, the, the, the whole concept of it um, and, and some of the things you're saying, uh, it, it all goes back to family members, friends, and even people you meet on the street being mindful of an appearance. You know, especially if you know the person for X, I mean, you know, your neighbors, I've been living in my house, so I don't know, 30 years. Um, I know my neighbors. So it'd be, it's like all of a sudden, this is not Susie's normal way of looking, of coming out of the house and going, she's like, I've never seen her wear her hair down. Guess what? Everybody has a bad day once in a while. But if that becomes a pattern. Exactly. You're not wrong in making that phone call. Um, and I, I think that's the biggest issue, I suppose. You know, somebody would turn around and say it's an intrusion on my privacy, but it, but it really isn't. In today's world, it's acknowledging you care. Um, and the last thing, and, and, and not the last thing, but the last thing I think a person wants is to hear a story a week or two or three down the road that so-and-so died, or this happened, or that happened. And you say, oh, my God, you know, I saw her the last couple of weeks and things didn't look good. Make the phone call. You know, and uh, what you've done is, and this sounds terrible, but I mean it very sincerely, you've taken the burden from yourself and given it to the safe center. Okay, I don't mean that, you know, you guys can only do what you can do, but at least I've made the first step. But you know what? I know you want to say something, Steph, but we have to take a break. So we're going into a break and we will continue. And Stephanie is going to answer that question because I know it's right on her tongue. Uh, you're listening to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We'll be right back. 
So I get this call from my grandma, and she's like, What's a podcast, and how much does it cost? So I tell her, podcasts are like radio shows, but you can download them on any device and listen to them anywhere at any time, and they're free. And then she says, I see, but where can you find good ones? And I'm like, go to wcwp.org slash podcast and check out the lineup of original shows or download any podcast app on your phone or tablet and search for LIU Studios. And she's all like, oh, that sounds easy. And then she asked me what an app is. LIU Studios Podcasts, available on any podcast app. You know, those little button things on your phone screen. Just ask your grandkids. Welcome back to Community Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I'm your host, John Ryan. My co-host today is Otto Lose. And we are having, learning. And we're learning. We're having a wonderful education from Stephanie Cinnamon, who is with the elder, oh, who is the elder abuse coordinator, excuse me, at the Safe Center. And as I went to break, I basically put the burden of the world on the Safe Center. <laughs> and Stephanie's going to respond to that. Okay. Um, yes, the Safe Center is one of the many agencies and resources here in Nassau County that provides senior services for seniors, whether they're victims of abuse or not. Um, but I also wanted to bring up about the elder abuse um, EMDT team here, which is composed of a number of agencies that I mentioned in the beginning of the program. Um, we had on um, <clears throat> June 15th, we had our first elder conference and we provided information for senior victims of abuse, as well as their caregivers. Um, many, I mean, we did so many different trainings and one of them was on resources here in Nassau County. And it's not just a safe center, but there are so many organizations here in Nassau County that um, you can contact if you have any questions regarding possible abuse of a senior person and or requesting services for a senior person, being a member of your family, a friend or a neighbor. Um, what we had developed as a result of the elder conference is we put together a list of all the resources available here in Nassau County for the senior citizens that as I spoke to Otto and John, I can make available to them to disperse to those who may be interested. Um, I had mentioned other agencies such as Family Child Association, Adult Protective Services, Catholic Charities, Self-Help Community, Nassau Suffolk Law Services. Um, there's so many organizations here in Nassau County um, that you can um, contact directly and not have to go through the Safe Center in order to get information that you may require or need. I, I would suggest getting that list to Christina, who sure. then would you know, get it to the planet, actually, our local planet. <laughs> it's so true. And of course, we have 311, which is very important. So when in doubt, if you don't want to partic pick a particular agency, call 311 and they'll get you in the right direction. Because the last thing and what I'm coming away with now more and more, and this is such a wonderful conversation with Stephanie, is there is such a plethora, I like that word, plethora of information and organizations out there that are willing to help, want to help, and they're there to help. So make a few phone calls, you know, and I say start 311, call the Safe Center, but there's so many more that Stephanie is, is sharing with us that it, it's just, my God, it's a wonderful place. Not well, a wonderful know, place that you have situations like this, but there are resources. Go ahead, Otto. Well, that's one of the reasons Long Island, it, it, even with its, you know, financial uh, burdens, maybe in some cases, is still a great place for a lot of people of all ages, but particularly seniors. You know, in Nassau County, you just mentioned a list of resources. We have more medical facilities uh, and and protection, if you will, uh, for seniors in, in this part of the world than uh, I can't imagine it anywhere else. I really can't. You know, it's great. I mean, one of the things, you know, when I, when I, I go out to community education, um, according to the 2019 Census Bureau, about 25% of the population in Nassau and Suffolk County are 60 years or older. 
And the fastest growing segment of residents are over 85 years of age. So the need for services for the senior population just here on Long Island is, is extremely, it's increasing and is important. I also wanna stress that a lot of these services are free, mm. okay? Um, you don't have to pay for them. So I, I really encourage, if you just have a question, because oftentimes you may have a question and not know what specific agency or what specific service you really, really need. Um, for example, an elder person who has difficulty getting in and out of the bathtub, they may not need a home aid to come to the home three times a week to assist them in bathing. They may just have to have bars put up in the bathroom. They may have the physical ability with a bar there to climb in and out of the shower or the bath type of thing. So it may not need, you may not know the specifically what service you need, but when you make the call, these agencies evaluate what your situation is, okay? They may come to the home, look at your home with obviously with your permission and, and see, yeah, we can just put bar here and there, that will solve it. Like I said, and I stress it, every time I, I talk to community is when it comes to adult, but especially a senior person, we want that person to remain number one in their home as long as possible, if that's what their choice is, and to be as independent as possible in taking care of themselves. And that's what our, 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 our goal is. Which ties in exactly with Project Independence. Exactly. Uh, you know, the same idea, a nurse, social worker, pre-COVID, and I'm probably kicking back in soon, I hope, uh, would visit your home and make suggestions about, yeah, you should have a grab bar, you should take this rug away, uh, exactly. you know, you should use a walker instead of a cane, uh, whatever, uh, you know, depending on all the circumstances, which are always different, um, you know, and maybe some technology may help um, certain situations, um, different emergency response systems, whatever, all of which you don't have to be an authority on. There are people out there who do know these things who can help. And we're loaded with that in Nassau County. And, and Project Independence is in North Hempstead right there, you know, at the top of the heap. You know, Otto, what you're saying is interesting also, and then we'll go back to stuff. COVID, you mentioned, you know, as COVID ends, it'll be interesting to see if the number of abuse cases really skyrockets because people will be having more access to a home. You know, the social workers will be going in. They haven't gone into a home in a year. Uh, I don't know, but I'm just saying now, and if, if this recommences an open door policy, so to speak, will people be coming out saying, oh my God, look at this place. It's a disaster. Poor thing is bruised and the dishes are in the sink and uh, the, the, the laundry is piled up. And it'll be, I, you know, I, I'm just guessing, but I would venture there's going to be a rise in all these situations just because they weren't acknowledged during a 12 month period. Steph? Um, I, I'm not familiar with this specific as far as when it comes to the cases of elder abuse, but I know that when it came to referrals to child protective services, that decreased, but the number of severe child abuse, in which the child ended up in an emergency room, hospital, or urgy center, right. and the number of domestic violence cases increased during this period of time. Um, yes, once since the pandemic is we're lifting a lot of the restrictions and a lot of the service agencies have more access to someone's home, um, things may open up. I just wanted to bring up, because I know we don't have that much time. Okay. Now, you talked about, I know, John, you brought up a neighbor, a family member, you know, whatever, being aware. In this day and age, a lot of families don't live in the same home, don't live in the same community. In fact, they may live out of state. And oftentimes you may not be able to walk over, knock on the door to find out how your loved one, you know, how your senior loved one is doing. You know, I keep on mentioning there's so many agencies out there that provide services. A lot of them 
you know, within churches, synagogues, mosques, and other religious organizations provide services where they have um, their volunteers going to home check up and things like that. Um, FaceTime. My father has an iPhone. I have an iPhone. I set up FaceTime for him. So when I call him, I can see him. Okay, I can see how he looks. I can see what the room, because he usually answers in the kitchen, what the kitchen looks like, what the den looks like. Is there a collection of newspapers on the floor? Like John said, are the dishes, you know, piled high on the sink or, on op or open cans lining the counters, okay? That's, so there are certain things that you can do, even though you're not physically um, near that senior person being a friend net, net, or relatives that far away you can. I have the phone numbers of two of their neighbors. I have phone numbers of three of their friends in the community. If there's a concern that I have and I can't get through to my parents, I call them up, they knock on my parents' door. We have a lockbox with a key outside my parents' door. I will give them a combination. So if they knock on the door, no one answers, they can go in. Okay, so there are a lot of things that you can do as a concerned, you know, relative, neighbor, or friend um, to check up. And the most important thing, and that's what we do in the education department, the Safe Center, is prevention. Prevention strategies for the elderly, um, what they can do to prevent they themselves. Um, becoming victims. And obviously, and I know you do it through Project Independence, and I'll be upfront and honest, I didn't know, even know your organization or program existed. And when you initially invited me to speak, of course, I Googled you and read about you. And I was like blown away, literally, with all the services that you provide. I mean, social work, transportation, nursing, education, services specifically for veterans, it, it, was, it was amazing. And um, everyone should know about it. And perhaps you can be an organization that can influence other towns to you know, um, have such programs. Um, obviously an elder person, physical activity important, just as much as mental activity is. Um, if you cannot leave the home, like you said, you have those online services, sit down doing your stretching or your weightlifting or your Pilates, you don't have weights, use a soup can, okay, to move around things like that. Um, plan for your own future, which is really, really important. We all write wills. We all have advanced directives like healthcare proxies. We write them when we turn 65. But you're your own medical mental health situation changes, that within your family changes, revisit that every couple of years. You may wanna change who your beneficiaries are. You may wanna change who your healthcare proxy is. You may wanna change your living will. You know, if you want, God forbid something happens, you want, uh, do not resuscitate, or do you want everything done to maintain your life? So frequently revisit those documents. Oftentimes people sign those documents, put them away and never look at them again, okay? One of my favorite, I'm sorry, but one of my <laughs> favorite things that Project Independence does is a thing called Circle of Support, which ties in with what you're talking about. It's a five page or whatever document where you put all kinds of information. But actually, Dan, we're out of time. And Dan okay. is waiting. Unfortunately, Otto. So that, that's another conversation. Stephanie, I want to thank you so much. You did such a remarkable job, and you ended it so nicely with all the information that Project Independence has and that you have and all the agencies that you work with to make this really an, an amalgam of something that is for the people. So, Stephanie, from the Safe Center, I want to thank you very much. And Talk of the Town is coming up next with Christina Liu, who's going to be bringing you up to date on what's going on in North Hempstead. So you're listening to Community Talk Radio here via Project Independence on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Thank you.